day. Mm -hmm. And as the county, as the mayor of Glen Cove, we had the ferry in Glen Cove, the Foxwood Casino Ferry. We arranged uh, to have the ferry go in. As a matter of fact, I, I, I had been campaigning. I had done a 36-hour tour up until September 11th. And I, and I the, the, all night and day, in a Winnebago, traveling throughout. As a matter of fact, I have so many good stories with that. I should tell some more stories. And um, so I was going to sleep late the next morning and vote around 9 o'clock, 9.30 or so, when the cameras would come there. So I was still in bed at uh, 8 o'clock or so. And uh, Mike Norman, who was my uh, city councilman in Glen Cove at the time, is the treasurer of my campaign, comes into my bedroom to wake me up because Helene had already gone to vote that morning. He was already working on the campaign <clears throat> to get the vote out that day. Uh, and she did a fantastic job. She was my secret weapon. There's an article written about her, Helene Swazi, the secret weapon. So anyway, so Mike shows up and we turn on the TV and and the towers were being, we couldn't believe, you know, like everyone else, we couldn't believe it. <clears throat> and uh, I spoke with uh, Duhan, uh, the doctor at the emergency room. Uh, what's her name? She's the head of the emergency room, Duhan, I think it is. I spoke to her early and we talked about how we would take injured people in Glen Cove, but we had to get them out from the city to Glen Cove. So I said, we get the ferry. So we arranged to have we with the to get the ferry to go into the city. We would pick up injured people, bring them to Glen Cove, and bring them to the hospital. So we called for you know doctors, and we called for volunteers to meet down at the, the ferry terminal. It was a very it was a, this is a big story. So um, so uh, it was. I called that morning, and I, the mayor's office. No, first I spoke called the emergency management office of the county. And the guy who was the head of emergency management, I won't say his name, he's passed away since then, but he said, he was, he was saying, I said, we need to coordinate with the city how we can help them in this crisis. He says, they're all dead. Hmm. They're all dead. Because it was all in the emergency management center. It was in the World Trade Center. Hmm. Didn't, you, didn't you hear what's going on? They're all... I said, well, you still have to have contact with the mayor's office. We've got to talk. We have to help them somehow. No, there's no one to talk to. Everything's... I said, well, these guys are crazy. <laughs> it's a good thing I was running because you guys didn't know what they were doing. Hmm. So... Uh, so I called up the mayor's office, and I spoke to Bernie Carrick, who became a very heard, famous yeah. figure, yeah. who was the uh, police commissioner at the time. Or and, and I talked to Richard Sherry, who was the head of emergency management at the time. And we, they said, you know, get the people, arrange for the ferry, and we'll coordinate as we go forward. But don't do anything yet. There may not be any survivors. Was what he, this was it's still very early in the morning. And uh, I said, what? He said, well, let's, let's, let's just be ready. So uh, we arranged. So what happened was I called for volunteers on News 12. Tom, Bob Gaffney called me up, who was the county executive of Suffolk County. He was yelling at me. He says, what are you doing? You're supposed to be coordinating this with people. What are you doing going to this on your own showboat and blah, 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 blah. I said, no. I called up the emergency management in the county, and I spoke to Bernie Carrick, and I spoke to Richard Sh and I did a conference call with Bob Gaffney and Richard Cherry to say, listen, we explained to this guy that I was coordinating this with you and this is... So Gaffney and I became very good friends when I related to became county executive, but he was really, really mad. And um, as a matter of fact, I created the Office of Emergency Management when I became county executive out of that experience. So uh, we ended up bringing about 2,000 people out of the city that day. I remember at the ferry terminal, waiting at the ferry terminal, people coming off the boat covered in the dust mm -hmm. from September 11th, and people were, there's some people were, you know, bleeding, some piece of debris had hit them or something like that. And they were not all from Long Island. There were people from New Jersey, there were people from Connecticut. They just had, wanted to get, they wanted to get out of the city, they're freaking out. And the, the ferry terminal was down by the World Trade Center. And uh, people were thanking us, thank you so much, and we arranged for rides for people. And we, you know, the, we had volunteers staging their doctors, and their and they said, you can't come in, you can't come into the city because there's nobody, there's nobody left, there's nobody to treat. So we're here, we're, you remember all the communications were shut down. Yeah. Right. So we were talking to people through other, I, I don't know, rumors and, and they were saying how St. Vincent's Hospital was, was packed and they needed help there and they're, they're not telling you everything that's going on. And uh, we ended up sending some people in to find out what was really going on. At St. Vincent's Hospital, and you know the idea of going into the city at the time was, you know, and they were telling us not yeah, to come into the city. Also, yeah. So, um, and I remember the next day, 
I went into the city. Uh, and I remember, I remember I was wearing like a pair of loafers. It was, you know, I had my, my badges, Marigold Cove. I was wearing a blue blaze. I mean, it was not properly dressed, certainly. And I went to the World Trade Center site. And I remember how, you know, you see the stuff on TV and the pictures in the newspaper. And, I, and I'm at the pile, you know, at the World Trade Center. And it's this massive, gigantic space. You know, covered all of downtown Glen Cove. If you you know, if you think about the downtown area, Glen Street and schools, the whole thing, and it's all debris, and the the workers, the firefighters and rescue workers that are work are like little ants on this giant pile, and there's all this debris everywhere, and the smell from all the the, the acrid smoke and the and the dust and and everything, and you're wa walking through the dust, and I remember seeing a. Uh, what used to be a donut shop, and there was, there was the tray of the all the on the on the the trays of donuts, all covered in debris and dust, and the smell of the food going bad, and and uh, just the little piles of men, and he felt so helpless because it was such a massive space, and you know everybody's trying to rescue people. Are people still alive inside? Remember, and you know there's no way that these this these little pockets of people working as many as there were could possibly get to all that debris because it was just so massive and you couldn't see it from the pictures or on TV or in the newspaper so uh, <laughs> yeah so anyway so we were all exhausted and uh, you know we had been campaigning and the anxiety of the you know you build up for the race and then yes. the anxiety of it it's all ca and then all the devastation of September 11th and there's people that knew you know a friend of my brother's had died. My brother died in 2000. Now his friend died. He was, at, was supposed to go to work. Uh, no, excuse me. He had been fired from Cantor Fitzgerald. Hmm. And he was going to go golfing that day. He decided to go clean out his desk that day. And he died oh. going back to the... And there was other stories. Guy from Glen Cove, John Puckett died. And, uh, other people. I, mean, I just, there was so much going 